All right, guys, we have an exciting one for you today. We have Karapika on the right side, the green Hunter x Hunter deck versus the purple Hunter x Hunter deck. The Phantom Troops on the left side. The Phantom Troops are very unique, very interesting. They utilize themselves and their affinity to gain power and to get stronger and to gain... And all of them have one played abilities, so it's very interesting. As you can see on the right side, we start with Zepal. Zepal, a really strong start there. Uh, letting you fix your hand if you didn't draw perfect for your sevens. Uh, Zepal lets you draw one, trash one. Of course, perfect start. Let's see if uh, Phantom Troops are going to be able to do that as well. The guy on the left side was a little bit newer with the Phantom Troops, but I know he was able to beat the Korapika player earlier. Uh, but unfortunately, maybe uh, he's just uh, taking his time here. There we are. The level five to start into a crollo so strong there uh, start there nothing to move let's see how the Kurapiko is going to respond to this going to the three as you can see there i see in his hand the three energy so what he's going to want to do is he's just going to get to the three i'm not sure if you even move melody forwards unless you can get to five uh, unless you can get to seven so you would have to be able to play the neon down in order to move your melody forwards and even then you wouldn't move melody forwards because you would maybe lose on the ability for your karapik to do anything of course on the left side all he had uh, was able to do was uh, actually that's very interesting so i do want to mention one thing that here happened on the left side he played uh, the Mashi, and then I guess he didn't want to play anything else. I'm not sure why. But I remember there was a question asked here. Do you want to play? He said, no, I don't want to play. But So that was his own decision. He didn't, want to, he didn't want to play that zero back down. I'm not sure why. But as you can see here, there we are. That's what I'm talking about. Melody, unless you're going to get to seven and be able to play that Kurapika, there's no reason for you to move that Melody at all, especially against purple which is able to remove your melodies very easily with very little effort it's v it's it's not a good idea to move him out too early unless you're already or unless you really need him for seven which is actually going to be the case as long as he draws a neon next turn the Kurapika, he's going to be able to activate him now this Kurapika, i think on the right side is kind of a Kurapika that is meant to suck out all the attention so he's almost a bait Kurapika okay I'm not sure what's happening here we're gonna go ahead and move so there's the Krolo again finally I'm not sure why we didn't play it earlier and then we're going to play the mummy guy which lets you move around your units which is pretty cool Unless he can remove this Kurapika, he's actually going to fall really behind very quickly. Then he goes for the Naban, Naban Juo, which is useless. So I'm not really sure why he actually kept that uh, Krolo in hand. And that means he didn't have to keep that Krolo in hand at all. There you are. The mel Melody move should only happen when you're going to 7. You should never ever risk your Melody. I mean, unless you're playing against something that's not purple. Unless you're sure that he's not going to be able to remove your Melody. There's no sense of you moving the melody out too early for one life. It just makes no sense. You're gonna, unless you're able to consistently get your seven energy or like your five energy, because usually you get stuck at not being able to generate five energy. As you can see here, Karapika is generating six energy right now into the neon. That's the only reason he moved out the melody because he realized that he can start generating the seven energy without the melody. And at the same time he moved the uh, melody, he was able to utilize uh, the neon and get a Kurapika out of that. The perfect play there. Kurapika lets you fix the top of your deck. A lot of attacks here. Phantom Troopers needs to deal with this. So the problem with what happened here is Phantom Troop did not deal with the first Kurapika. And now watch what happened. It's exasperated so heavily for Phantom Troops. I don't know how they're going to deal with this. At this point, he needs to remove twice. 
He does have Snipe. He does have Uvigens. But they're not on board. So they're going to take another turn to set up. That means he's going to take... He's going to have to waste... Uh, basically, he's, he's behind the turn right now. And as you can see, he hasn't even hit the Karapika once. Because he hasn't been able to set up at all. Karapika is just so smothering. And, and I'm not going to lie. The Phantom Truth, of course, he didn't play the Krolo. So that was a bad idea. But he didn't really do anything else that was a mistake. Karapika is just activated through the Neons. The Neons are extremely strong, allowing you to play active units. And uh, if you don't remove the units beforehand, he doesn't actually then need to feel any pressure to build up a board. He could just play a Neon and not feel the pressure of having something else next to it. To because Neon is too expensive at 2 AP, basically wasting his whole turn. He, but he doesn't care because he has a full board. So losing that 2 AP doesn't matter. That's why you, you need to be able to deal with the uh, Kurapika before Neon comes. But even when Neon comes, it's a calculated uh, upbringing. Uh, okay, Phantom Troop is going to try to deal with the Kurapikas now, finally, using the special for the uh, Phantom Troops, letting him remove 3k, then allowing him to use one of the one-played abilities on the board because he has a Krolo. Using the Nabongo's minus 1k allows him to KO the Kurapika. I'm not sure if he actually used it correctly. I'm sure. I think Nob Nobongo is not allowed to remove. Uh, is he allowed to remove power from anything below 1500? I'm not actually sure on that. Either way, it's going to be very difficult for the Phantom Troops to come out. Okay, there's the second uh, ability here. Now activating the Krolo again to uh, use that Nobongo to get another removal. Very strong turn. Unfortunately, that's really it. The deck has run out of steam. They were the final AP just being a searcher. Gonna to set himself up. What happened was he put it in his hand, so then he put it on the board. That's why the the opponent gave it to back to him. Uh, we just wanted to show the camera, but uh, there we are. So he attacks with the Nabongo and then the Krolo. Oh my God! There we are. We can actually raid. This is another thing Karapiko needs to me uh, keep in mind, is that honestly, don't even if you can't play a Karapika, set up seven Dawn because it's almost guaranteed one Karapika per trigger per game it's almost a guarantee just like uh, the average of no triggers per Kurapika game is three no triggers the average of trigger of hitting a Kurapika per Kurapika game is one Kurapika per game so you, there's an you have basically an average of one Kurapika every game that you're gonna hit in your triggers so if you have your seven dawn up you are almost guaranteed to hit that Kurapika. Neon is going to be playing that Kurapika. Of course, the Krolo player might feel, whoa, what the hell is that? But then there it is, the Kurapika lands, the sniping Kurapika lands, and explains to the opponent why he uh, played the Kurapika at the front with the Neon. Unfortunately here, guys, looks like Phantom Troops completely ran out of steam. And have no ability to deal with those two, three Karapikas on the board, three Impactors. And uh, yeah, there's nothing on the triggers. Let's see what Phantom Troop can do here. Can we come back? Uh, let me let me think about this. The Illumi is not going to help. The Uvogen is too late. They're not on the board. There's no real removal. We don't have a Sniper. Honestly, if we had the Sniper here, it would have been perfect. Kaino could have done some damage and set up a board. Now we can't. So honestly, guys, this is looking very grim for Phantom Troops. Let's see what he's going to do here. Playing the Fee 10 down, removing the 3k from the board, from that Kurapika. And then playing another Krolo down to remove another 3k using his Krolo's abilities. And there we are. That was a nice removal. It was very expensive, as you guys can see. But it does put two two characters on the board. So if he was able to do that a little bit earlier on the first Kurapika that landed, that would have been amazing. Unfortunately, he did not do that. And as you can see, that's it. The game has ended with the Kurapika on the right side having basically six life, not being touched. And uh, the Phantom Troops 
honestly, they did try to get set up, but they couldn't. And there were two specials. In <laughs> and as you can see, the average for Karapika per game is three non-triggers. Every single game, your average is three non-triggers. If you hit two non-triggers in the game, then you have played a lucky game. Anyways, guys, interested in your opinions, uh, get ready. I'm going to show you guys some deck profiles uh, very soon for these decks. Get excited. Leave a comment down below what deck you want to see first. I think we're going to do a Kurapika deck profile. I'm very excited to show you my list. And yeah, interested in your opinions. See you guys.